All right, so I want to have a little talk about SQL versus NoSQL databases, and I want to just—I just want to say, like, I'm not an expert at database or backend. I'm a jack of all trades person. I'm a full stack engineer, so take with take what I say, like, with a grain of salt. Is that—is that the saying? Um, I've worked with SQL databases a little bit, um, but for most of my career, I think I've worked with more like NoSQL slash document stores. At work, full time, I use something called DynamoDB which is kind of like a key value store. So it's kind of, it's not really SQL. I wouldn't even really consider it. I mean, I guess it is technically no SQL because it doesn't have SQL statements. But w when would you choose SQL versus no SQL? Okay, so the first thing that people say is SQL databases are vertically scalable. What does that mean? That means that you have a, a machine, a box, and as you get more traffic and as you get more SQL queries, you basically just add more CPU and memory to the box and you scale it up vertically, right? You just keep on adding more stuff to the box so that you can handle more throughput on your SQL database. Now the issue with vertical scalability is that at some point you're gonna hit a threshold. There's only so, it's only so fast that one box can handle all these requests, do all these queries, you know, read and write from your data store, your, your hard drive or your SSD drive. So that's kind of like one argument as to why you pick SQL versus NoSQL. And I'll be honest, SQL can handle a lot of traffic, right? SQL has been used in production for a very long time. It's, you know, it is a tested way to store your data and it works great. So I don't think comparing this for in terms of scalability is good unless you actually know up front, like you're going to have, you know, a million or a billion entries in X amount of requests a second then you might be able to kind of analyze, okay, what do I actually need to store my data in? And there's other like SQL databases and NoSQL databases I'd never use. Like people talk about something called Cassandra. MongoDB is a big one when you, you know, try to learn how to code. A lot of people use the Mern stack. Um, some benefits I've seen personally with using something like Mongo when you're beginning is you get to be able to work directly with JSON. Like, you know how you're learning JavaScript and you're learning about JavaScript objects and what JSON is. It's really easy just to take that JSON and store it directly into Mongo because it kind of, it maps one-to-one. -one. It makes sense and it's really easy for a beginner versus something like SQL that has its own, uh, you know, its own DSL, is that domain-specific language? It has its own language where you basically use that language to write data to the database and query data back, right? So you're going to be writing like SQL statements, insert statements, select statements, drop table statements, stuff like that. So you kind of, there's like more overhead to SQL which can be kind of a pain for a beginner because you just have some data and you just want to store it, right? So that's one reason why I think Mongo got really popular, especially with like the YouTube space, because people can just build a simple application with it and not have to worry about learning how to write SQL statements. Um, the one thing I've noticed is kind of a pain with NoSQL is there's not, there's no first class support for relations, right? So typically people say SQL is like a relational database. And most of the time, data that we're dealing with in this industry is all relational. You all, everything relates to something else, right? You have a user, that user has multiple posts. Those posts have upvotes or downvotes. Those posts might have comments. Those comments are also related to other users, right? So data is typically, I don't know, honestly, 95% of the time relational, right? So if your application needs relational data, which more than likely you do, you probably just want to stick to SQL because it gives you out of the box this really great way to just query for what you need. On our current project at work where we're using um, DynamoDB, sometimes it's very, very difficult to like add in a new feature where the user wants to query the data by a particular key because it doesn't allow you to just quickly change how you query your data. With something like Dynamo, you have a PK that you need to know up front and then sometimes you'll have an SK that makes up like something called a composite key. So you have to know up front like these keys that your data belongs to so that you can actually grab back a set or subset of data. And then you have to, in your like node code, filter through all that data. And it's just kind of inefficient and it's actually really hard to write queries against your NoSQL, um, or at least in this case, your DynamoDB table because they don't have support for that. I mean, you can do something called like global secondary indexes. This isn't a DynamoDB talk, so let me just get off this topic. but. I've just, there's something about NoSQL. It's sold as if like it's super flexible and it's really great. 
And then you start using it for your application and you know your user or your client asks for a really basic feature like i need to be able to filter down by i don't know a a close date or filter down by a status on something or like a tag let's say you're doing something like you can add tags to entries well if you use dynamo like you're kind of screwed you have to reanalyze and redesign how you're storing this data maybe you need to create some type of global secondary index sometimes that doesn't work Sometimes you have to bring in yet another data store like Elasticsearch and duplicate your data in multiple places so that you can allow users to search for data based on you know whatever criteria they need. It just becomes a mess. Now that's just an issue with Dynamo, which is considered like I guess no SQL. Um, but you're going to run into similar issues with something like MongoDB, where it's not relational out of the box. So in order to grab data and then also grab the data that it's related to you're kind of going to shoot yourself in your foot if you start storing a bunch of relational data in there because your back end, you're going to basically query for all your users. Or you, you, let's just get an example. Let's say you're writing like a blog um, and you have the ability for people to leave comments. So you might write a Mongo find statement and say, find me all the comments for blog post A, right? And that'll give back an array of, you know, 20 comments. But the users aren't, attached to the comments right you might have like a user id on the comments or if you do NoSQL correctly you just duplicate the user data and you put it directly inside the comments so every comment is now like a, a beefier amount of data and you have the user that's kind of duplicated all throughout your database so like um and that's kind of like i think that's called denormalization or normalization data denormalization i forget what the term is but i think when you're using something like SQL, you know, they always try to tell you to, I think they tell you to like normalize your data. Again, I'm not an expert at this stuff. I'm probably getting the terms messed up. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Okay, so denormalizing is basically you're duplicating data, right? So typically when you're using SQL, they tell you that you need to normalize your data and don't have redundant data. But one thing that you start noticing with NoSQL is you end up like duplicating a lot of data different places so that you can actually do these queries uh, pretty fast. And so you don't have to do like all these extra like inner joins and stuff like that, which is cool. I mean, that's great for querying, but what happens if you have 20 comments on your collection of NoSQL data and for each comment, it has a different user object that's embedded in it, right? And then let's say six months down the road, one of those users decides to change his name. And he has, let's say, you know, a hundred different comments on different posts or a thousand different comments. How do you go and figure out all of the posts that he was part of? Well, you have to go and query for every single post, and then you have to query for every single single comment that has that same post ID. And then you have to query and find all the users who are in that comment. And then you have to basically update that information one by one, like wherever that user changed. So it's it's cool. NoSQL is cool, but at some point, like when you actually have users updating this data that you've duplicated everywhere, it becomes a nightmare because it's really hard to like go and find all the places that you know this denormalized data was duplicated on. So yeah, I don't know if this talk is even going anywhere, but what I'm trying to say is just stick to SQL, in my opinion, unless you know upfront that you need to have scale and upfront, um, like. I don't know. I just don't see anything wrong with SQL. I, then again, I haven't really used SQL on like a large scale production system before. So maybe, you know, there are some issues down the road when your SQL database gets larger. I mean, to be honest, I don't even feel like I'm qualified to even be talking about this stuff because I'm not like a back end engineer and I haven't really dealt with like huge data, like the data that you see at something like Google or Microsoft or Netflix. Like I haven't even, I can't even comprehend like how much data that they have in like it would be hard for me to even say that you need to use SQL or you need to use MySQL or you need to use like NoSQL or whatever, because it all depends on your data, depends on the size of your data, depends on um, how relational your data is, depends on if it's easy to just duplicate data everywhere and how much of a pain it's going to be to go back through all those duplicate, you know, denormalized data sets and update them when people update their account name. Is that something you can do with like a cron job every night you go through and just update things that people have updated? Or is it something that needs to be instantaneous because you have multiple users working on the same application at the same time and they need the most live up-to-date representation of the server state? Um, 
So hopefully I just made you really confused about if you should do no sequel or sequel. Honestly, I would just pick with stay with sequel. Um, if you're watching this video and trying to get like actual advice for building a production system, I would not listen to my advice because I don't have good advice for that. But if you're a beginner and you're trying to learn how to code, I think there's a lot of benefit to starting with SQL versus using something like Mongo. I'm not saying Mongo's bad, but I'm saying that SQL has uh, a lot of benefits to it. And SQL's the thing I started with. I started coding with PHP using MySQL and you know learning about the tables, how to do inner joins, how to do migrations. And learning all that process is really useful because honestly, SQL is used for a lot, a lot of applications still today. And it's really powerful. So check out Prisma, by the way, if you wanted to find like a nice, an ORM, like let's say you don't even want to worry about writing SQL statements, or you understand how SQL statements work and you don't want to go through that tedious task of writing them all out. Use something like Prisma, which is great because you just define like some data models and then you run one command and it basically generates all your migration scripts, runs them on your database, and you're good to go with like your latest version of data. Yeah, I hope this talk was kind of uh, interesting to listen to or kind of hopefully I talked to you something. Be sure to join my Discord if you want to ask me questions directly and you all want to learn together. Every day I'm trying to learn more about coding. And if you join my Discord, you can kind of talk to me and ask my community members questions if you are trying to learn something. But anyway, have a good day and happy coding.